On today's episode of Project Grip S14, we yank the old SR out, start swapping parts over in preparation to put everything back together. With the SR already half apart, yanking this out should be a real easy job. I've just got to tackle the drive shaft, obviously the mounts, and I've already taken the hood and the front bumper off to make it easier to get the engine hoist in here. So let's get started. First order of business is to disconnect the drive shaft from the differential, which is held in place with four nuts and bolts. Then the yoke slides right out of the transmission input shaft. You want to drain the transmission fluid because if you don't, it can end up leaking out the back of the input shaft, creating quite the mess when you're removing the assembly from the engine bay. Now is a good time as any to remove the clutch slave cylinder. One of the last items left is to remove the old trusty B&M shifter off of the transmission. Some people dare try to remove this whole thing actually on, but trust me, you want to take the shifter out, otherwise this thing is going to get banged up. Um, and, and potentially broken while you're sliding the transmission out of the engine bay. So this is six bolts, and after that, pops right out of here. The only remaining part holding the transmission to the chassis is the rear transmission mount. Slide a jack underneath the transmission to support it, and then undo the four bolts. With an engine hoist supporting the engine, go ahead and remove the two bolts that hold the engine mounts in place. With the cylinder head off, removing the SRN transmission is a much easier job than if you're yanking a complete engine, but the technique will be very similar. Swing the motor up and as you do, move it towards the front of the car, all while making sure that the transmission doesn't get snagged up on the power steering rack and lines. And just like that, it's out. All right, success. The SR, at least what's left of it, and the transmission are out. Now what we're gonna do is separate the transmission from the block and then start swapping parts over. Here's a job I've been meaning to get to but have been procrastinating on and that is replacing my old worn out and tired engine harness. This thing's been through the ringer and back. Some of the wires that you can see, as you can see, are cracking. Like the loom is just old and brittle. This is a disaster waiting to happen and I hate having to trace down electrical problems. So, my decision was to pull this out, what a great opportunity while the engine's out, and replace it with a Wiring Specialties Pro Wiring Harness. This is a plug and play solution for anyone looking to do an SR swap into a 240SX. They actually also offer 1J, 2J, LS swaps, R, RB swaps, so they've got a plenty, a plethora, sorry, of harness options for the, for the 240SX chassis. But what makes these really nice is obviously the nylon sheathing that's wrapped around the high temperature wires. They use higher temperature wires and OEM, which is great for anybody that's looking to use their car for more of a performance oriented application. But however, if you're into the show car scene, then this harness actually is also not a bad solution because it can be tucked. That's not something I'm gonna be doing, but if that's something that you're into, then this is also a great application for you. So let's get this wiring harness into the engine bay, through the firewall, and plugged in. Routing the wiring harness inside the cabin isn't that bad a job. Just take your time with it and make sure the connectors don't snag on anything and hold you up. I almost forgot here, the secondary harness has to go through the firewall as well. Good thing I remembered. This one should be easier than the one before. There we go. The last minor tidbit left is to position the harness on the firewall so that when the engine is back in the bay, all the connectors will line up and plug in to their associated spots.
Here's something I forgot to mention. The wiring specialties harness that I ordered was actually set up for my AM EMS, which includes an air temperature sensor and this pressure sensor all running to this plug. This thing truly is plug and play. For the time being, that wraps up the wiring specialties harness install. Once the engine's in place, I'll be able to plug everything else in. So while I've got the engine bay empty, I've decided to remove the automatic S14 brake booster that's on the car. Because as you remember, I had issues with brake lock up on the track and I suspect they're over boosted. So this is the culprit. And what I've gone out and purchased is a Nissan Sentra B13. So like uh, I think 89 to 94 uh, Nissan Sentra manual brake booster, which as you can see is like half the size. So it's going to reduce the brake assist, which means increase my pedal effort, which should result in more modulation on the racetrack for my big Evo Brembo brakes. Removing the brake booster is as straightforward as it gets. I had to disconnect the locking pin holding the lever under the brake pedal and then bend the brake master cylinder out a bit to be able to pull the booster out. Installing the new booster is pretty much the opposite of removing the old one. The brake lines are flexible enough that I was able to slide the master cylinder onto the booster and then bolt it down and now it's just a matter of testing out the new booster in the springtime. Well, that wraps up this episode. I've still got a few things left to remove off the old block, but in the next episode, expect to see a replacement SR20 get torn down and prepped for a metal head gasket and ARP studs. Yep, yep, yep. You gotta pull it now, man. Get it off now.